Ready to start? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Today we'll discuss about this verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, "Wa Allahi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jamia." We'll talk about only the first part of the verse here. Here Allah is telling us that He has created everything on the earth for us. You know, in case you are wondering, really, everything on the earth for us? Yes, everything. There is an emphasis on jamia that. Everything on the earth is created for us. Okay, what about this? Is this for us? You know, what does it do for us besides giving us painful bites? Now, how about this creepy thing? Uh, what does this do for us? And then you have several devastating processes in the planet, like earthquakes, for example. This is the Turkey Syria border earthquake that happened earlier this year. How is this for us? Because Allah is telling us everything in the earth is for us. Also, there are volcanic explosions. Sometimes a volcano destroys an entire town, village within hours. Why are these created for us? The question comes. Uh, this is the Tonga volcanic explosion that happened last year. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, it's the largest volcanic explosion ever recorded in camera. See what happens. You see, within minutes of starting the explosion, the city is wiped out. The population didn't have much of a chance. Now, then there are tsunamis. You know, they cause devastation. You must have seen some of those tsunami videos that hit the cities in Japan. So what could be the purpose behind all of these on Earth? And Allah is telling us that everything in the Earth is created for us. You know, let's see why. Let's look at our friendly neighborhood cockroach, for example. I found uh, Professor Srini, who is a world-renowned cockroach expert. You know, there is something called cockroach expert out there. He spent 20 years studying cockroach. He found some amazing things about uh, cockroach, and I have collected a lot of material from his work. Uh, but I sometimes wonder how his CV looks like. It must be you know, cockroaches everywhere. And think about how his wife's life has been living with a man who spends day and night with cockroaches. <laughs> so anyway, let's see what cockroach does. Sugar like the rest of us. But they'll also go for things like cardboard, book binding, human toenails, rotting meat, blood, excrement, and even each other. That's right. These roaches have been known to eat other dead or crippled cockroaches. So there you go. Now, cockroach is the nature's cleaner. You know, if you give cockroach this, it will convert it into this, the nitrogen in the air. Uh, by the way, do you know why the sky color is blue? And it's because of nitrogen. Nitrogen gives the sky the distinct blue color. So cockroaches you know, consume the garbage in the nature. And it then does what it does. And that contains nitrogen, which then goes back to the atmosphere. So cockroach is nature's nitrogen recycling machine. That's what the purpose of this creature is. If you look at the complete nitrogen cycle, Know, plants and animals and garbages, they all hold nitrogen inside them. You know, we all have nitrogen in our body. Every cell in our body has nitrogen in it. Even our DNA, you know, DNA has a significant amount of nitrogen in it. So dead plants, animals, garbages, they are holding nitrogen inside them. Something needs to release them. And that's what cockroach would do. Cockroach would consume them and then release the nitrogen back into the atmosphere. That nitrogen would come down to soil via rain and other processes. And it is consumed by the plants, which then gets consumed by the animals and us. And, and then when the animals and plants die, they become food for cockroach. And the cycle continues this way. And if, what if the cockroach wasn't there? The entire cycle would have been broken. Now we have this lush green forest, you know, clean forest floor. If you go to a forest, you will see the forest floor is unusually clean. And that's because of you know, cockroach. Without cockroach, we'd be living in a planet full of waste. And the stench everywhere, this planet would not be habitable for us at all. So next time you see a cockroach, you know, instead of skimming, we should, you should actually say, Jazakumullah khaira you know, for cleaning the planet for us. And, uh, and then you should call pest control. Yeah, because if you have cockroach at home, that means that there are rotten, dead stuff 
maybe inside the walls or maybe you know, underneath your flooring or maybe you know, beneath the kitchen furniture, the most common place. Something is attracting cockroaches, so you need to find that out. Pest control can get rid of that for you. And the cockroaches have been there since the time of the dinosaurs. You know, for 300 million years, they have been cleaning the nature. You know, they kept the planet nice and tidy for us to one day arrive and enjoy the beautiful nature you see today. Now, by the way, do you know what happened to all the dinosaur poops? You know, you didn't see big piles of fossilized dinosaur poops around us. You know, what happened to all of that? Cockroaches ate them all up. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Otherwise, we would be having a very big trouble. And Allah has given cockroaches an incredible digestive system. It can digest unthinkable things that would kill all other animals. You know, most pesticides, fertilizer, you know, big fat, rotten stuff, you name it, cockroach can digest it. And it's a very talented creature. You know, it does so much for us in the nature. It doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. Seen enough of this? <laughs> I, go, I, I, I don't understand when it was a big deal about Spider-Man. We should make cockroach man movies. You know, the cockroach man <laughs> saves the day by eating up all our trash and releasing nitrogen back into the air. You know, that should be a good movie to watch. Uh, you can read about uh, cockroach, what cockroaches do for us from these sources. These are sources I have used. Uh, Oxford Academic Journals have got a lot of articles on cockroach. There's a whole book written uh, on cockroaches published by John Hopkins uh, University Press. Uh, this is an incredible creature. You, if you read that book, you'll be surprised how much Allah has put in just one tiny creature. The amount of complexity and amount of function that can be put in a small creature is mind-boggling. You know, everything Allah creates is incredible. If you uh, if you look at all of these insects, you know that we find scary, disgusting. They they are all there to do something important for us. You know, even tarantula spiders. You know, we are all scared of this creature. Recently, scientists have found that they could be really useful for us. Spider venom can help treat chronic pain. Now, hundreds of millions of people all around the world suffer from chronic pain. You know, some of you here I know have chronic pain. I have chronic pain. You know. Spider venom, inshallah, uh, one day will end our lifelong misery. And, uh, you know, the earth is like a giant factory. And Allah has put billions of creatures who are working day and night to keep this factory running efficiently. All these creatures you see around us are earth's workers. Uh, they work for free. We don't have to pay for them. And uh, they keep the planet going for us so that the planet can provide everything we need to grow and become an advanced species. Now, every creature has some important role. Some creatures are expert at recycling. You know, some have the role of CEO, chief excretion officer. <laughs> That's how they clean up poop of other animals. You know, some have the role of CFO, chief fungus officer. By the way, if any CEO or CFO are there, <laughs> I apologize for offending you. you know, they, all of these creatures have amazing roles to perform in the nature. And also he, Azawajal, created every animal in a perfectly efficient way. Every creature is fully recyclable. So they will consume something from the nature and convert it into something else. That something becomes the food of other animals. You know? So the recycling starts here. And besides just eating and pooping, of course, each and every animal does important job in the nature. Do you know what important job rhinos do in the nature? What does this giant creature do in the nature? Anyone know? I mean, it's amazing thing. Isn't it? First of all, rhinos graze on, uh, graze on vegetation. So by grazing on vegetation, they keep the vegetation short and prevent a particular type of vegetation from becoming too thick and taking over the available space. So this creates more open habitat for uh, animals to roam around. And this is very beneficial for many animals' growth. Uh, they dig up the soil, which helps air go into the soil. So nitrogen gets absorbed into the soil, and nitrogen is essential for soil's fertility. It also improves drainage. You know, it can prevent flooding, improve water quality. They create these wallows, which are like depressions in the ground where rainwater would accumulate. And wallows provide a source of water for other animals. They also help disperse seed. You know, they eat plants in one place, then walk a long distance, then they poop. That poop contains the seeds. The plants grow from those seeds far away from the original mother plant. 
So this way, uh, plants can spread vast distances. So cockroach will do that. Cockroach are the forest engineers. And you know that the poop they produce, they will go back to the soil. You know, so the soil will get the nutrition back. More recycling is happening there. Some of it will go back to the atmosphere to release the nitrogen and other gases. More recycling. And not only that, even their death is fully efficient. The rhinos are a source of food for many other creatures. And when they die, something else will degrade them and release the nutrients that held in their body back into the soil and the atmosphere. So, you know, the rhino is now 100% recycled. Now, this is the kind of fully efficient recycling mechanism Allah has designed in the nature. But we, oh, we are a totally different creature. You know, we consume enormous amount of resource from the nature. Animals, plants, minerals, water, soil, rock, and all of these are consumed to produce our clothes, furniture, electronics, buildings, and everything else that we use. And then we produce incredible amount of waste, plastic waste, textile waste, construction waste, chemical waste. And then in the process, we pollute the air, the water, the soil. And then we give back some of what we have taken from the nature. Now, we are really the worst creature now on the planet, you know, in terms of the negative impact on the nature. But you know, it wasn't like this even 200 years back. You know, the earlier generations were not producing this much waste. Most of their waste were organic waste. You know, they decomposed in the nature. But now our plastic waste doesn't decompose. You know, it remains in the nature for hundreds of thousands of years. Chemical waste doesn't decompose. You know, construction waste doesn't decompose. Even in villages where most populations still live, especially in a not so rich people, they are also quite efficient at recycling. They build their buildings with wood, which is recyclable. They use their food waste to make compost. They use clay pots or um, wooden or metal plates and cups. Almost everything is recyclable there in the villages and mostly in the, most of the poor countries out there. You know, they don't use the styrofoam cups, plastic bags, you know, so much furniture buckets a lot of paint and other building materials that we you know those who are, live in the cities we use we are the main polluters this one percent of the population is creating the 90 percent of the pollution in the planet you can do a simple experiment you know don't put the trash out for one month just keep them piling up in your back garden or even better put keep them in your kitchen and see how much trash you accumulate in one month now, that should make you realize how much trash you are putting out there for the earth to deal with. You are not dealing with them. You want the earth to deal with that. You know, we have a big trash problem. Uh, if I show you some of the scary statistics, we produce 2 billion tons of waste per year. That's three trucks load of waste dumped every second. Now, by the time we have been here, thousands of trucks have dumped waste. That's the volume of waste we are, we are producing. And let's see how good we are at recycling our garbage. You know, for billions of years, art has been recycling at 100% efficiency. Now Allah has designed an incredible recycling mechanisms on the planet. You don't see million-year-old waste like you know, dinosaur poops all around us. There, there are very well-designed cleaning and recycling mechanisms all over the planet. But how are we at recycling? Only 14% at a global average. Some countries are better. Uh, I know UK is at 42% or something like that. Uh, but on an average, if you take the uh, worldwide average, it will be only 14%. We need to really recycle more. You know, we are killing the planet with our waste. And the price we'll pay is our next generation. They will be having serious amount of trouble for all the waste that we are putting out there. All right, going back to the topic of you know, everything in the art is created for us. Do we really need millions of species? You know, can we live with a couple of them? You know, let's do a thought experiment. So what if there were just humans and cockroaches living on the planet? You know, human producing garbage and cockroach would clean up the garbage. Can we live happily ever after? So let's see what would happen in that case. So in one generation, let's say two human will produce four, six, ten other human. In one generation, cockroach would give birth 200 other cockroaches. And in three generations, there could be 16, 20 humans on the planet. In the third generation, there will be 40,000 cockroaches in the planet. 
So that's the kind of the exponential growth you have. And if this continues soon, you will have the entire planet covered with cockroaches. You know, the, uh, I, I calculated that within 20 generations, there will be this many cockroaches and the entire earth will be covered by cockroaches just within 20 generations. So Alhamdulillah, I know that didn't happen. There are billions of species, yet not a single species had uncontrolled population growth for billions of years. You know, not a single species had uncontrolled growth because Allah has put an incredible balance in the nature. And let's see that balance. If you look around, you, know, you don't see rotting logs, dead leaves, dead animals everywhere. For millions of years, leaves have been falling. You know, animals have been dying. So where did they go? They are consumed by this layer of the creatures, you know, fungus, bacteria, pill bugs, insect larvae. They, they are consuming all those dead, dead materials. Now these creatures would have unlimited supply of food and spread all over the planet. What is keeping them in check? You know, their population is kept in check by another layer of insect, you know, artworms, millipedes, some bigger creatures. And then their population is kept in check by other larger creatures. So all these creatures are designed and planned in such a way that there will be perfect harmony and balance in the nature. And that is Allah's master plan. We human can't even plan an organization of a couple of hundred people correctly. You know? Those who have worked in the senior management role, you know that how difficult it is to set up goals for the team so there is no conflict of interest between the teams. It never happens uh, perfectly. So there will always be some team have some conflict of interest, some organizational politics going on here and there, and, and the organization isn't running as smoothly as you would want them to be. But Allah has done it at a billion scale. Billions of species, trillions of trillions of creatures are existing on this planet for billions of years in perfect harmony. Think about what it takes to plan at that level until we arrived, of course. Now let's talk about you know, some of the dark side of the creatures. So what is the deadliest animal on Earth? Who knows about this? It could come in the quiz. Anyone know what is the deadliest animal of the creature? Yeah, yes. Shark? Yeah. Even more deadlier? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Just say it. Lion? What else? Cheetahs? Tiger? Yeah, you, you wouldn't imagine what is the most deadliest creature on the planet. Killer whale? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Piranha? Bear? Uh, let me show you what is the most dangerous creature on the planet. Now, according to World Health Organization, number one position we have mosquito. <laughs> mosquito. Mosquito, yeah. You know, nearly one million deaths per year from mosquito borne disease. Mosquito is the number one deadliest creature on the planet. But sometimes people ask, why did Allah create this creature? You know, what if there was no mosquito on the planet? By the way, uh, congratulations, you are the second most deadliest creature on the planet. Half a million deaths per year by humans. Can you imagine that? It's a hard number to swallow. You know, this statistics reminded of this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah. You know, when Allah told angels that He would create humans and send them to Earth, and the angels were surprised. You know, why create a creature that would cause so much harm? And we have proved the angels right. Half a million per year. Imagine that. All right, back to mosquitoes. Uh, so uh, mosquitoes are not entirely evil. You know, only six percent of species of mosquitoes bite human. The rest of them don't. don't. Uh, uh, and they only the females, by the way. Now, the males are fine. They hang out with their friends, eat fruits, drink over weekend, uh, halal nectar juice, of course. You know, uh, it's only the females of the six percent species who are responsible for <laughs> all of mankind's suffering. You know, uh, but they do it for their children. You know, they have a noble purpose as well. You know, one of the puzzle in biology, if you are any of you are interested in studying biology, is why did mosquitoes develop attraction for human blood? Previously, when there were no human, they were living happily, you know, with living, feeding on other animals. What did we do to turn some of the species of mosquitoes against us? Not the rest of the species. They are still not interested in us. Some of the species became interested on us. So, you know, something to find out. It's one of the puzzle in biology. Now let's see what good mosquitoes do. You know, Allah doesn't create any creature that 
uh, that only causes harm. Every creature has some benefit for us. You know, mosquitoes eat fungi, algae, uh, parasites, and other microorganisms. If we didn't have mosquitoes, then we'll be having an explosion of fungi, algae, and parasites, and there will be pandemics going on every year. You know, thanks to mosquitoes, these microorganisms populations are kept under check. So mosquitoes are preventing epidemics for us. You know, although they cause a lot of harm, but still they're, they're doing even better things for us. And mosquitoes are the security guards for nature. You know, in rainforests, swamps, or like wetlands, sometimes you find areas where there are a lot of mosquitoes. And those places you will see that larger animals stay away from, especially humans, you know, they will stay away from those places. So those areas become like nature reserves, undisturbed from influences of larger animals and humans. So that protects the ecosystem. So they are the protector of ecosystem diversity. And they are food for others as well. You know, fish uh, eats mosquito. There are many fishes that will jump out of water and eat mosquitoes. Uh, frogs uh, eat mosquitoes as well. My kids made those animations. You know, very good job. It looks really good. Uh, so they are a vital food source for other uh, animals as well. Uh, you can read about you know, the benefits of mosquitoes from these sources. I can share some of these materials with you if you want to study. There are a lot of them. I, I think I counted 26 positive contributions mosquitoes do to, to nature. All right, let's talk about oxygen. Let's breathe. Uh, half of all oxygen is produced via photosynthesis on land that you all know. You have read in science books that trees, shrubs, grasses, all those green plants out there produce half of the oxygen. Where does the rest half come from? Who knows that? Yeah, how did you know? Very good. We have a scientist coming there. You know, it comes from the ocean. I, I do you know what in the ocean produce oxygen? Anyone know? If you look at the satellite picture of the ocean, you will see that the ocean water looks like as if someone has put a lot of powder on the ocean water, isn't it? If you zoom in a bit, it really looks like powders have been spilled on ocean. These powders are trillions of very small creatures living on top part of the ocean water, and they are called phytoplanktons. They are like plant-like creatures. They are not like animals. They are almost like plant. And they live on top part of the ocean where the sunlight is, is there. And these creatures use sunlight and the carbon dioxide, just like in you know, trees, they will take carbon dioxide and sunlight and they will do photosynthesis and they will produce oxygen. Now, once the animation catches up, I'll show you that they consume carbon dioxide, use the sunlight, and then they produce oxygen. And that oxygen comes out of the ocean water and goes back to the atmosphere. So that's what the job that phytoplankton are doing. The remaining half of the oxygen that are produced on the planet are coming from these phytoplankton. And they are also doing another important role for us is that they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. You know, every year, nearly half half a million ton uh, worth of carbon are removed from the atmosphere by by these phytoplankton. But we are releasing 35 billion tons of carbon every year. You know, that is the problem we have. We have factories, cars, airplanes. They release enormous amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 35 billion tons. Can you imagine that every year? And half of the carbon are consumed by the plants and the phytoplankton. So where does the rest half go? Yes? So the ocean, the phytoplankton are there. So phyto, the ocean and the land are taking half of it. Where does the rest have going? Nowhere, unfortunately. I wish there was some solution out there. Nowhere. So let me show you the consequence of that. You know, back in the good old days of you know 17th century or 18th century, we produced very little carbon dioxide. And as a result, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere didn't increase much. The top line shows you how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere and the bottom line shows how much we were producing. The plants and the phytoplankton were able to consume whatever carbon dioxide we were producing. Then the industrial revolution began. You know, we started building factories, cars, ships, airplanes. They started releasing enormous amount of carbon dioxide. 
and now we are producing so much carbon dioxide that the defensive mechanisms that Allah has put on the earth are no longer able to compensate for it. See how it has gone up. You know? We have unleashed an unprecedented amount of corruption in the land and the seas. And this has come up in this verse. Zahar al fasadu fil barri wal bahri bima kasabat The corruption has spread on the land and the sea because of what we have done. Here Allah is telling us that if we cause corruption, we will see it on the land and the seas. The land and the seas will, will come and show us what we have done. The nature will take revenge on us. So that's the guarantee there in the verse that if we cause corruption, the earth is going to fight back, and we will con con we will suffer some of the consequences of our action. So we all have to think very carefully: how can in each and every one of us reduce the damage that we are causing to the planet? You know, one of my presentation will be around this topic, inshallah. You know, how we are harming the planet and what can we do about it? One thing you can do, do about it from today is recycle more, please, as much as you can. And, and try to use all the food waste that you produce and make compost out of it and put it on your garden. You can reduce so much waste just by doing this one habit change. You know, Allah has put several difference, defensive mechanisms in both land and sea to compensate for the damage we'll cause. They're doing their best, you know. But our greed and corruption have exceeded the limit of what the planet can bear. Uh, now, going back to the creatures put on the art to help us, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the phytoplanktons. You know, phytoplanktons need iron to survive and multiply. Now, there are trillions of trillions of phytoplanktons all over the seas. How are they getting that enormous amount of iron supply in the seawater? Can you think of what is giving them? such a large amount of iron supply? Any idea, anyone? <laughs> no? <laughs> Why are we here? Go back there. The smallest creature in the sea gets his iron delivered by the largest creature ever to exist on this planet, whales. You know, these whales swimming in the oceans, traveling around the planet, they are delivering iron into the sea water. So how do they do it? You know? Yeah, anyone? They do it via their awesome thing, poop. <laughs> so let me show you, this video will show you how that, that is done. That's the, that's the well poop you are looking at. So now we have this habitable planet because of this majestic creature. Now it's a tragedy that in last hundred years of reckless well fishing has caused a devastation to the population of the wells. There are less than 90,000 wells left. Now there should have been millions. Now we, we kill them all. And if whales become extinct, we will have a serious ecological crisis. Now there will be shortage of phytoplanktons. Less carbon dioxide will be absorbed. Less oxygen will be produced. It will be a very difficult planet to live on. So, you know, sometimes you wonder that why do some people risk their lives and go to oceans and fight all those whale poachers trying to protect whale. They are literally doing a jihad on behalf of the whole mankind and not just the mankind, on behalf of the whole planet. No, Alhamdulillah, Allah has created these giant creatures that are there to maintain the balance on earth for us. And, and he made it hard for us to fish and consume as well. Otherwise, all the whales would have been finished by now. All right, let's talk about other things on the earth. You know, uh, we talked enough about animals. Let's talk about the other processes that causes a little bit of disturbance in our mind. Uh, for example, you know, earthquakes. You know, this even causes crisis of faith in many Muslims. I have seen many Muslims struggle. Why are there earthquakes? You know? And especially atheists. They show these processes like you know, earthquakes to say that, how can there be a merciful God when there are devastating processes like this? 
So let's see why earthquakes are there. So let's understand what earthquake really is. Earthquake is a byproduct of some very important changes in the planet. So you have all studied in school that earth has multiple layers. The outer layer of the earth is called the crust. Now the crust is not a single solid thing like an eggshell. It is broken into multiple pieces. Each of these pieces are called tectonic plate. Now these tectonic plates are not fixed. They are slowly moving, bumping into each other. And this happens because of the molten layer right below the tectonic plate. As the molten layer circulates the hot molten magma, these plates keep moving and sometimes one plate goes under another plate. And as one plate goes below another plate or plates rub with each other, the pressure builds up. So you can imagine it's bending and pressure is building up. And when the pressure is suddenly released, we get earthquakes and tsunamis. So the question comes, why have these tectonic plates? Why have them move and cause earthquakes and tsunamis? Can we not live without tectonic plates? So billions of years ago, actually the whole earth was one solid landmark. There was just one continent. And tectonic plate movements actually separated that one continent into the six different continents that we have today. You know, this resulted in incredible diversity in the nature in different continents. You know, if there was just one landmass, we would be having one giant desert or maybe you know, one giant forest and that's it, nothing else there. So today we have so many countries with so much diversity in nature, mountains, rivers, you know, forests, flatlands, hills, lakes, so much is there because of the movement of tectonic plates. If tectonic plates were not there, nothing, nothing else is there. And that's why you will see that when scientists are looking for other Earth-like planets, habitable planets for us to live, they look for tectonic plate movement. If tectonic plate is not there, forget about that. That planet will never be suitable for us. Another benefit of tectonic plate is that you know, they create volcanoes. And volcanoes allow the Earth to supply minerals from inside the Earth to the surface. So it's a continuous supply of minerals. And similarly, under the ocean, between the gaps of the tectonic plate, molten stuff from beneath the earth will come out and deliver lots of nutrients and minerals into the sea water that all the sea creatures will consume. And all these you know, minerals are feeding the trillions of animals and plants that we see all around us. Without tectonic plate movement, this process will be broken. Soon all the minerals that are available on the surface of the planet will be consumed by the creatures uh, and then they will all die. This tectonic plate movement is maintaining the continuous supply of minerals. And a side byproduct of that movement is earthquake. Another big benefit of earthquake is that the, the shaking of the cross actually releases valuable minerals like gold, silver, copper, and they, they bring them closer to us so we can mine, mine those minerals. You know, we need gold, silver, copper. Your phone, and computers, all the electronic devices here, they all have gold in them. Microprocessor has gold in it. And we have copper uh, wires all around us, you know, flowing, electricity is transmitting. So without earthquake, we would not have modern technology. You know, you wouldn't be here today to watch this presentation and learn about earthquake if earthquake wasn't there. <laughs> we would be still living in some cave, uh, feeding on some raw animals, that's it. So there we go, everything in the art is specifically put there to benefit us. And Allah has given us this wonderful planet and subjugated everything in the art for our benefit so that one day we can come and live in this planet and become a technologically advanced civilization. You know, by the way, Allah, Allah could have just dropped us in a planet that has nothing but desert and some date trees. You know? That's all we need, by, by the way. You, know, you can just drink water and eat dates for breakfast, lunch, and supper. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need. We can live on and you know, expand our population. No problem. But Allah, alhamdulillah, you know, he, he didn't do that. Instead, he created this beautiful planet you know, with majestic mountains. You have beautiful green lands, pristine lakes, lush green forest for us to not just live comfortably and enjoy. Okay, no problem. And he gave us thousands of varieties of food and drink for us to enjoy. You know, he created a vast and complex ecosystem with billions of creatures who work day and night 
to maintain this planet for us that gives us everything we need. And in fact, not just this planet, you know, Allah has subjected the entire universe for us. You know, it is mentioned in this verse, سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيًّا مِّنْهُ He has subjected literally everything in the universe for our benefit. And all of these are a gift from Him, Azawajal, for the mankind. Uh, this, this planet and this universe, Allah is telling us, is a gift to us. You know, it took me over two months of research to find out why did Allah say everything in the universe, you know, the sun, the moon, billions of planets, billions of galaxies, why are they there for us? How are they benefiting us? You know, we are this one tiny insignificant planet in this vast universe. How come all of these things are for us? I'll show you, inshallah, one day, you know, what I have found. It's totally mind-boggling thing. You know, how Allah has designed the entire universe so one day a creature with a complex nervous system can come to a planet and become a technologically advanced civilization. It's incredible design and planning in the entire universe. And the last part is important. And in these there are incredible signs for those who reflect. And Alhamdulillah, we, today we are joining among the people who reflect on his creation. You know, we are meeting one of the Quranic expectation, people of tafakkur, reflection. That's the whole purpose of my series, is to become one of them, people of tafakkur. Uh, in the next episode, uh, inshallah, we'll discuss about the superior design of human body. Uh, we will explore why Allah states that we have the best form. It's not just the brain, you know, from head to toe. We have been precisely designed and fine-tuned to become a technologically advanced creature. You can clearly see that Allah intended for us to become a technologically advanced creature. And I will show you the incredible precision in design in our, in our body. And you know, after becoming a technologically advanced creature and developing a lot of modern technology, we have started displaying some intelligent behaviors you know, like this. All right, so we will we'll talk about this intelligent creation next time, inshallah.